buttons and pulling triggers. This is Gun Funny. Welcome to Gun Funny episode 41. Today we're going to chat with Chad and Eric from Iraq Veteran 8888. Make a prank call about wheel guns and talk about ATI outdoors. Today's panel is Sean Heron and I'm Ava Flannell. I'm a panel all amongst myself. Right? How y'all doing? <laughs> What's up, guys? <laughs> <laughs> all right. Thanks for having us. Thanks for uh, agreeing to be on the show. I don't think you guys realize just yet what you got yourself into, but uh, thanks again for being on the show. You're welcome. Absolutely. It was rather <laughs> reluctantly we agreed. <laughs> Reluctantly, my ass. No, we, this is great. No, we love you, Ava. Awesome. All not right, you, so, not you, Sean. So whatever, Chad. Sorry, Sean. <laughs> so before we get into things, let's talk about Mat- or Manicore Arms. Yeah, definitely. So manicorearms.com is the place you go, and I've been kind of pushing their M-Lock rail. We, we talk a lot about their transformer rail, but for people who don't really want that, who don't really want the replaceable panels with either the key mod, M-Lock, Picatinny, whatever you want, wherever you want on the rifle. They've, they've got just the M-Lock version as well, which looks just like it has the same great uh, design aesthetic. It feels great. It's super light, but it's just got M-Lock. So if you, if you want to live a boring life, that's totally fine too. They've got you covered. I personally prefer the transformer rail with all the different panels that you can add. But here's the thing. You can have one. You can have both. You can have either. You can get it all at manicorearms.com. And the coupon code is? GUNFUNNY15, and that gets you 15% off. Oh, yeah. There you have it. Go check them out, manticorearms.com. I'm going to use that for those CZ mags that I want order. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Perfect. Gun funny 15. I'll remember that. <laughs> Learn the things you never knew on deconstructing the industry. All right, guys. So first thing I want to ask you is how did you guys pick the name Iraq Veteran 8888? Because that's that kind of, a, I mean, that's that like a mouthful. That would be for Eric. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, go ahead. Ahead. So is yeah. that one on me? That one's All right, on you. Look, no, I, I promise the story's really boring, so I'll keep it really, really short and sweet. So, that's you know, one. like back in the early days of the internet, when people would get like random names that they would select, it would be like skater guy, six something, whatever, or it'd be like, I don't know, makeup girl, blah, blah, blah. Like it would, you know, these cheesy <laughs> names that we came up with. Well, at the time... You know, I guess like going to Iraq and not, I don't know, dying was my biggest accomplishment, I suppose, at least in my, in my, what, how old was I? 20, my 20 year old mind, I guess that was like, yeah. yeah. So, you know, I was like, Hey, well, I'll make my screen name Iraq veteran. Then I needed to come up with some numbers. Well, at the time, and this is going to sound really, I guess, weird, but at at the time I was a big Dale Earnhardt Jr. fan and his race car number is 88. So I was like, well, I'll make it Iraq veteran 88, whatever. I, I tried to take that. It was taken. Well, then I was like, well, dang it, this isn't ever going to be anything. It's not going to matter. So I'll just make it four eights. And I just doubled up on the eights. So now every time somebody asks me that question, it's actually Dan Larnhart Jr. trolling me. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I'm just wondering, though, like, uh, have you ever reached out to Iraq Veteran 88 and been like, hey, man, can I buy your can I buy your channel or your username? No, I mean, like, if, if, if I could have gone, if I would have known that it was ever going to be anything, uh, I would have probably named it something different. But I mean, we don't know these things, you know, in, in life, we're, we're constantly uh, surprised with things that happen. And, you know, I, I didn't well, know that the channel was going to amount to anything. And don't forget that all the conspiracy theories out there are a lot of fun. The Internet comments oh, sections yeah. on YouTube are, are quite entertaining quite a bit. It's almost like people watching at Walmart. It, it is really random. It, it's just it's, it doesn't even really mean anything. It's just it's one of those silly, like early Internet names is what it is. Now, you just mentioned Makeup Girl. Can you tell us about that channel that you started? <laughs> no, 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 no. That wasn't None actually that. Eric. That was me. <laughs> okay. So I, I, I just, you know, in my, in my other life. Actually, well, you want to hear something that's funny. A, that's another show. So, uh, Sean and I were thinking of starting a, uh, a, a whole other YouTube channel where we were going to be called Malcolm and Gertrude because that's our prank call segment. And we were going to, I Is don't know. Sean Gertrude? Mm, yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so uh, we went to go create the YouTube channel and it was taken. And so I'm like, well, who the hell took this? Like, who, what are the chances? And we looked them up and it's like these two old people just making like comic <laughs> videos. <laughs> we have a, we have a undisclosed YouTube channel that's, that's kind of interesting that we just secured a while back and maybe one day we'll do something with it, but it's called Candid 
You can't tell anybody. Oh, I can't. Oh, I can't tell anybody no. about so it. So now people have name. to. It's, it's the name it's is secret. awesome. It's top secret. Oh, is it really? Well, go ahead and share it. All right. So it. look, just I'm, I'm going to tell you the name, and you can figure out what what it might be. But it's called Candid Corpse. Uh huh. Candid Corpse. So if you go on YouTube and you look it up, it's there's us. no videos, but it's it's really us. <laughs> All right. Just uh, wait. Now I'm intrigued. It it is it, 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 it the intention of it is to be a prank. A practical joke and prank uh, YouTube channel, but yeah, we but, but practical jokes and pranks, it could probably get us arrested. That's how we feel. Very deep trouble. <laughs> yeah, so it might be interesting. So, no, I'm pretty so. sure that this is how it ends. Like I'm going to end up in jail for my prank calls. <laughs> yeah, that it could definitely happen. <laughs> I love it. So, okay, I'm sure you guys get this question all the time, but how did you get started? And before you start, I was reading a little bit on your website, and it said that you guys met uh, through music. So I have to ask: Did you guys like meet in Bandcamp? No, 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 nothing, but nothing regarding Bandcamp or anything like. Because Eric wasn't a band nerd, but I was. But uh, you know, when when we were in high school, like we were we were nerds. So like, I would get to school early, like seven thirty, before my mother had to get to work because I was a car rider because I didn't ride the bus because you know bullies and all that kind of stuff. And I was just a little wimp. And I didn't <laughs> want to get beat up. So, anyways, we got to the band room early, and we used to hang out. There was this little storage room in the back, and we would like hang out with some buddies and we would jam so be like guitar bass and whatever else back there this this fellow that we knew he was an alto sax player and a, bar- or a baritone sax player i'm sorry and we would be back there playing like jazz and blues and all kinds of crazy stuff in the morning and eric would get there early and we we kind of met through that you know so he'd come in and jam with us every now and again and we started playing music together more and he was uh you know in the guns quite a bit and um you know, I was kind of getting into firearms and, you know, my family had a big place to shoot. Uh, it wasn't very much at the time. My dad used to just zero deer rifles, you know, on this pie plate, uh, yeah, on a pie plate <laughs> on a plywood board, you know, in the pasture and everything. But we got a little farm down in the town that I live in and everything. And, uh, we started shooting over there quite often. And Eric brought a camera one day and that's about it. It's just, you know, started filming on off days and stuff like that and just shooting all kinds of crazy guns and hanging out and having fun. And, um, it just kind of grew from there, especially after he started up at Moss and, uh, you know, met Barry and started doing gun gripes and firearms facts. I mean, that gun gripe, the, the first one, no one can ever forget. Shake your, Shake ammo. your ammo, which in <laughs> essence was sort of a prank phone call. It was kind of a prank <laughs> phone call, yeah, indeed. but, was. uh, it just kind of snowballed from there and it grew and, and I wound up taking over a lot of the uh, filming and editing because I got into photography and videography and such. And, um, you know, just um, trying to make it is or trying to make it kind of what it is today. And, you know, somewhat of a somewhat professional looking, I suppose. I mean, you know, we, we try to be as professional as possible with it, but really just trying to put out good content. For we, both, we have to know. be more professional or more professional. <laughs> That's another story in itself right there. Yeah, definitely. I mean, and- but. And what year was it when you guys got started? Uh, you started the channel in what, like 2008? It's been almost 10 years. Almost 10 years now. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So. Any plans for the 10th year anniversary? No, mm. not really. We're, we're coming upon that, aren't we? I guess. I don't know exactly what day the uh, channel met its inception. I would say so. it's not about the inception of when the channel started. I think when we posted the first video. Yeah, I have to research that. I'm not sure, to be honest think, with you. We'll, <laughs> we'll have to blow up a car or something. Yeah, maybe you guys the, should do I something. I think the first video, or at least the one that's live on the channel, the first video is rapid K31 bolt work. <laughs> and I'm like 60 pounds lighter. <laughs> yeah, you, you don't you don't go based on time anymore. You go based on weight. Based on pounds. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, yeah, that happened. Oh, that was about five beers ago. <laughs> well, how long? How much longer was that? Oh, about sixty pounds ago. So yep. you just you don't worry about the time. You know, you worry about how much you weighed, how many beers you oh, got. Almighty. I love it. So you guys are tangentially related now, right? Tell us how that works. Well, it's not Alabama or anything like that. <laughs> I didn't marry my cousin, but Eric married my cousin. I think so that's technically, technically we're. We're cousins in law, if that's a oh, thing. God. <laughs> so you guys could sleep together. Well, right? Uh, only in Arkansas. <laughs> only, no, only in Alabama. We, but it's not very far. I mean, we could drive a couple hours and be there. Yeah, we are only like two hours from Alabama. Oh, I mean, that's we could cool. stop at, I mean, hell, we could stop at the rest stop right there. And I mean, yeah, it'd be all right. <laughs> it, I'm actually a little scared that it seems like you guys have put some thought into this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's no thought involved with that. It's real simple. It's just, it's just called redneck. I love it. 
So 2008, obviously things have changed a little bit. Why don't you kind of run us through your thoughts on how was the industry when you guys started, especially for content creators and, you know, kind of how is it now uh, where you sit? Okay. Um, I'll, I'll take that one. That's a good question. You know, it, it's weird. You know, early on, I think like looking back on, I guess a really good point to look at is like our first shot show. You know, you look back at SHOT Show, and SHOT Show, especially when you're a young YouTube channel, especially when it's your first time, and especially early on when a lot of people weren't really quite understanding what was going on with the whole YouTube thing. Yeah, it can, be a, it can be a general. weird time. You know, back then, nobody knew who we were. Uh, I mean, some people knew who we were, obviously, but it was just really hard getting a lot of these companies to sort of assign a value to what you do, to understand what you're about. Uh, you know, and, and this whole social media bubble has really taken a long time to burst in, let's just say the industry's mind, because, you know, they, I guess they're just used to the, the good old boy, you know, that a boy way of doing things. And, you know, they, I, I think a lot of it comes down to the fact that when you look at people in the social media realm, you know, primarily YouTubers and videographers and guys like us, we're just rednecks with cameras and we're just average people that just happen to be really well-known average people. So the issue that then becomes in their mind, they, they feel like they want to control you. You know, they feel like, Oh, well, uh, if we're going to do something for you or if we're going to work with you, or if we're going to do something at all, anything related to you, we want to be able to control the message. And when you refuse that to them, a lot of them have a really hard time wrapping their minds around, you know, exactly how, uh, they, take people like us because you know we we're very honest sometimes brutally honest and we care very much about our viewers and we we would never try to sell them on anything that we think is a piece of crap we would never you know lie to our viewers or be dishonest to our viewers and some of these companies the industry and as a whole just doesn't know how to take that brutal honesty they're not used to it they're used to uh just the the good old boy way of doing things and i think that now, you know, fast forward to, you know, now, I think this the last shot show we attended was our fifth one. I think we went either four or five years. I mean, it yeah. was at least three years we ago. We stopped attending shot show because we just couldn't justify going to shot because there just wasn't anything in, in it for us. It was mm-hmm. just the same. You know, we saw we saw through the industry and we saw through the this, this stuff that they do and the, the type of things that they want. And it, it's just fast forward to now. I think a lot of these companies realize that people like us are the new TV. Mm-hmm. People like us are replacing magazines. We're the new writers. We're the new authorities. I mean, whether they like it or not, they, they don't like it. I can tell well, you that much oh, yeah, right they now. They don't. hate our guts because we tell the truth, and they just can't handle it. Well, they hate our guts and, because yeah. we don't have editors bringing it down our necks. You know, we're not paid writers that put, put an article out there, and the editor gets to decide what, what happens to it. You know, a company who a company who advertises with, uh, say, a gun man, uh, magazine or something like that, or I should say a gun rag at this point, you know, they, <laughs> they'll basically come to an editor and say, hey, uh, we don't like this article. You need to change it. And once it's out of the writer's hands, he's been paid and there's nothing he can do about it. The editor has all the you know, right to change it however he sees fit, you know, to meet the needs of the customer. And what you read in a, in a magazine may not be necessarily true. Um, I was just reading an article the other day about 224 Valkyrie. And there's some things in there that I'm like, That's okay, crap. you know, I just can't believe it because we've been doing a lot of testing with that caliber. And there's there's definitely some problems with it. Like we mentioned, you know, with, with Tim and the other guys on the panel when we were at NRA. You know, the caliber kind of came out a little bit too soon. I think it didn't really get the testing that it needed. Mm-hmm. And then like something for example like the p365 from sig you know it seems like a lot of these gun companies nowadays are wanting to beta test their products on the consumer which is completely unacceptable Mm -hmm. yes now that testing should be done in the factory it should be done before that product ever comes to market there shouldn't be any problems with any firearm beside the random just very rare you know uh, qc issue that might might be prevalent you know, but I mean, you're talking like one in like a thousand units that might have something wrong, right. but not like batches of parts, you mm-hmm. know, that, that are not heat treated <clears throat> properly or this and the other, or, you know, firing pins dragging on the primers and firing pins breaking after four or 500 rounds. You're talking about firearms that people buy to defend themselves with. Right. And there's problems with it. That's, that's unacceptable to, to finish answering the question. Anyways, I think the, the I biggest, digress. the biggest thing about it is 
I think fast forwarding to now, the the industry realizes that people like us have a lot of reach and we have a lot of respect and that people understand that we're just average folks that want uh, them to have access to the information that they deserve and, and in a way that they mm. want to see it. And I think that the, a lot of them are really intimidated by that. They don't really know how to well, take people like us. They're intimidated by our independence. And, you know, we don't have bosses. We don't have editors, like I was saying. You know, I mean, we're our own people. You know, we we film the videos, we edit them, we syndicate them, we do everything. Right. We don't have any bosses telling us what to do. They're and, afraid of that for sure. You know, they're definitely afraid of the honesty for sure. And, you know, but it's better for the consumer and the viewer down the line, you know, mm-hmm. for sure, because right. they're actually getting the truth instead of what is just digested in a, in a gun rag Correct. Know, nowadays. So totally. anyways, how do you guys hopefully, find your content? Yeah, hopefully that answers the question. It does. Uh-huh, absolutely. So how do you guys decide on what you're going to make videos of? What's your con? Like, how do you decide the content? Well, <laughs> it just kind of very it, random. <laughs> it, 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 it's pretty random. And we, we sometimes will plan days where, okay, we're going to do a shotgun day and we've got random shotguns laid around. Say that, say there's some, some shotguns or something like that, that, uh, you know, Eric has a few, I've got a few that we haven't done videos on. We'll bring them all out to the range. We always have like backup plans. So if we have some, some issues with a gun or some ammo or whatever the case is, we can move on and we can do something else. But a lot of the guns that we, we show off on the channel, we, we buy ourselves. We borrow from people like Moss Pawn. We'll go up there and we'll borrow some guns that we think might be interesting and that our viewers might like to see. Um, right. Every now and again, we'll get some new guns in from, you know, companies just like on T&E. So we basically borrow those guns and we test them out and everything and try to, you know, put forth a, a good opinion about them. And, you know, we do quite a bit of grouping work a lot of times with rifles, especially, and, you know, chronograph work. And we do a lot of back end stuff before the video is actually even ever filmed, you know, that a lot of people don't realize, you know, the work that goes into that kind of stuff. It really just depends. I mean, sometimes, you know, um, we may just have like some random projects we're working on, for instance. Like, I've, I've got a Norwegian Kamalader that was made in, like, 1847. It's an old school, like, old, you know, service rifle, black powder, single shot service rifle. And that's a little project I've been working on now for about a year. I had a bullet mold made. I had a few other odds and ends. I had to make a repair on the stock. Mm-hmm. I've got a few odds and ends like that. Yeah, eventually I'll do a video <laughs> on that gun. We've been talking about doing a, a kind of a video on the um, on the Schneider for the longest time. We did a we did talking it. about doing a reloading video on it for a while, right. and we still haven't gotten around to that yet. Yeah, so some of the it's projects are like you know we might have random collectible guns and mill serps and things that we just haven't gotten around to doing a video on yet, and the, those are obviously in the pipeline. And we're always buying and, and acquiring various uh, you know examples of different collectible and modern guns, and all of those things obviously will will at some point find their way onto the channel. Man. And then some of the stuff that goes on, like as far as the political realm, you know, if there's some crazy stuff going on, we usually will make a day and we'll do like some gun gripes, whatever the case right. is, to try to, you know, put that information out there to folks. I mean, that's that usually takes precedence. But a lot of times, you know, the videos that we film, you know, like some of the videos that, that are scheduled right now for upload were filmed maybe like a month or two ago. So, right. you know, we, we usually stay pretty far ahead of the curve as far as that goes. But, you know, some of the current uh, current affairs stuff, you know, we usually try to get it out pretty quick. And, yeah, we uh, can we can make a little that. change to the mm-hmm. schedule and get something out sooner and later if we have to. And it doesn't really follow any rhyme or reason. It just kind of goes at our whim. And, you know, it's it's really random the way that we upload content and meltdowns. I mean, with that sort of stuff, sometimes it'll be as simple as, you know, I might get a call from a company. and They're like, hey, we're traveling through Georgia on blah, blah, blah mm-hmm. day. And, hey, uh, you want to do a meltdown on our blah, blah, blah. They're like, well, sure, I'm not going to turn down a chance to melt down a gun. So, right. you know, a lot of t- a lot of times if they're just passing through and they're, and they're traveling with machine guns, they'll be like, hey, we brought an extra upper. You want to kill this gun? Sure. Mm-hmm. And they'll bring it over and we'll do a meltdown and that qu- sort of thing. Doing, I mean, basically, like, being in the situation that we're in allows us a lot of flexibility with the schedule so we can arrange that kind of stuff and not really have to worry about it too much. So right. that's one of the big benefits of it. So um, basically the answer is it's very, very random. You guys have been making the meltdown videos for quite a while, and they're some of your more popular videos. You got four years ago, three years ago, two years ago. They're in the top five. But your absolute most popular video you've ever done is the range test of the ultimate AR-15 Mall Ninja Tactical Zombie Destroyer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was that was a really random thing. Like I wasn't even prepared for that video. We just sort of said, you know what? I went through the trouble loading up all these mags. I don't know what we're going to do. Let's just do something stupid and silly, and there it was. So, well, I think you and Barry were talking at the shop one day, 
about just putting everything you could onto an AR-15. I think that we're going to revisit that concept, and we're going to go further down the rabbit hole. How much did that thing weigh after it was in, like, 30 pounds? Yeah, it was, like, 30 pounds. (laughs) That's so ridiculous. (laughs) So that brings me to my next question is, uh, are there some videos that you guys have done that just didn't get the attention that you think they should have? It's funny. Like, sometimes we'll have a, a video idea in mind, and... We'll think, oh man, this thing's going to get a ton of views or whatever, and it just like flops. But then the videos that we just do randomly and just we don't even think anything about it, we just put them up because we wanted to. They're the ones that go crazy. Here's here's a really random. It's it's very ironic. This this is a random thing that that sort of coincides with what he said. So when we did the what is a brush gun video, Mm -hmm. Chad was Chad was like, this is the stupidest idea ever. Like I don't, what are we doing here? Like he didn't understand what we were getting out here and what we were doing. And he didn't think it was going to do anything. And our first brush gun video got over a million views. Mm. So anytime we break a million is always a good thing. Now. Yeah. You know, one thing I will say about videos underperforming is sometimes it's weird. They'll hit a bit of a stride. Like, like for instance, okay, really good example. Modern times. Like it's just last week when we posted the recent meltdown on the AK 74, it's only gotten like not even a hundred thousand views yet, Mm. which for us, you know, a, an average video should hit a hundred thousand within a month. Well, the meltdowns, but the meltdowns times, should hit a million. Yeah, the meltdowns, like most of the ones we post, usually within a couple of days, they're up to a hundred k. Yeah, right. for the most part. But it's weird. Like the video, sometime will catch its stride. It might be two or three months from now, mm-hmm. and we're not even thinking about what's going on. And then all of a sudden, that meltdown video, bam, it'll hit its stride. And it'll get up to like a half a million, three quarters of a million within, you know, two or three weeks. It's just weird. Like sometimes videos have to kind of sit there a while and they stew and then they hit their stride. One of the the most random videos like in recent memory that I could think of that did way more than I ever expected it to do was the video we did on the little KG made Tico. I mean, I just decided I'm like, you know, I'm gonna make this thumbnail crazy. So I showed like basically the it, it's the basically baffle. yeah, it's basically an integrally suppressed CZ four fifty five barrel and you know my buddy Kyle up at KGMA, he basically like machines the baffle stack into the barrel itself. And it's just a sleeve and then a cap. Mm -hmm. And I showed like a picture of the gun without the sleeve on. It looks crazy. It's just this crazy looking like muzzle break almost. It's like 10 inches long. So kind of made it clickbait almost, but that thing's gotten well over a million views. And I'm just like, I still can't believe it. And, Oh, there's so much hate in that video. It's not even funny, (laughs) but it's just, it's so much fun just to go and like literally people watch like comment, watch, you know, but stuff like that, you don't expect it to get crazy views like that. It just happens. It's just weird. Yeah. That's right. So have you, you guys never know what people are going to click on? Nope. Have you guys felt the effects of uh, YouTube's like changed, you know, guidelines? Oh, yeah, for sure. We had to pull down quite a f- number of videos just to meet the new policy guidelines. We had some direct talks with YouTube about, you know, basically what the policies actually meant. And uh, just for safety's sake, just so we didn't lose the channel, we pulled down a lot of the very popular videos, especially some of the cut shell videos with Barry where we were modifying ammunition. Um, I had to pull down a reloading video where I was taking six, five Swedish blanks and converting them over to like match grade ammunition. Um, Yeah, we pulled down. The stupidest things if you think about it. Well, yeah, and like one of the most dumb videos, I mean, it, it, it was... Yeah, it was actually one video that w- I didn't know that we'd get that many vin- uh, views was the AR build video that we did. We took a CMMG, basically like CMMG sent us a parts kit. They basically sent us an unassembled rifle, you know, per our request. Like, hey, can you send us all the parts for one of your like Mark IV LEs? And we're going to put it together and do like a complete like bare bones build video with, uh, you know, A2 front sight post, and the whole nine yards, everything. And that video had well over a million views. And uh, for a build video, that's a ton of views. And see, the thing is, like, you can't show with the new firearms or the new policies regarding firearms on YouTube. You can't, you know, show manufacturing a firearm. But see, if you look at it from a a legal standpoint and a technical standpoint, we weren't manufacturing a firearm. The firearm is the receiver. Right. It's the the receiver is transferred as a firearm. But see, the people at YouTube don't really realize that. Mm -hmm. Right. So we're just putting together, you know, parts. And making a complete in their ride. mind, you're taking a bin of parts and you're gonna have a gun at the end of the video. Exactly. And so, then we had to pull down our eighty percent Glock video. Yeah. You know, we did eighty percent bill, we had to take that down. Now I think the other prong of this question is has the policies affected, I suppose, any of our views or any of our traffic? And I think the answer is yes. Well, I, I think that YouTube I think that YouTube is throttling our content. I don't think they're sending out emails to our subscriber list when we post a video. I think that they're screwing with our 
I honestly, I feel like sometimes I screw with the view counts. Sometimes I feel like they screw with like the, the recommended videos. Mm -hmm. Like we don't show up in recommended video feeds. We don't show up in as many of the search results as we used to. I, I think that they are, physically throttling our content and it's not only that but you know also summertime is always a slow time for gun channels and stuff anyways for the most part perfect time for them to do it it's, mm -hmm. it's perfect time for them. yeah it's, it's already slow yep it's already slow and you know i mean who knows i mean it could be a cons uh, conspiracy theory or whatever but well regardless, there's, there's we, another prong to this we've thing. seen a huge slowdown the, in, the thing in is youtube so. youtube understands they're looking at people like mark zuckerberg and all this crap of him testifying before Congress and all this crap. They're seeing the stuff going on with the U-Praker suit, and they're watching that closely. Uh, you know, YouTube, I believe, is smart enough. Surely they are with their team of lawyers. They're smart enough to realize that they're treading in some very, very, very questionable waters by doing this. And they know they're doing it. And they know that they are throttling conservative channels. And they see the consequences that are coming down the line. They know it's an antitrust issue. And we have really crummy antitrust laws in this country. And I think that YouTube realizes that they need to lay low and quit their crap or they're going to wind up sitting in front of the, in the hot seat. The thing is, YouTube needs, needs to get back to its roots. I mean, originally when, when YouTube was created, before Google purchased them, you know, it was a platform for anybody to be themselves, you know, and just put themselves out there for the world to consume. I think it's clear yeah. that, they, that, they, that they quite blatantly uh, you know, throttle our message. Well, it's, people it's, like us. It's just like Facebook or you know anything else nowadays. It's all political. You know, it basically just everything flows with the political. Oh God, flow. and and they yeah, so. they throttle our Facebook stuff all the oh, time. Yeah. Hell yeah, I can post something on Facebook and it won't even reach. Not even a, a poor. Some some of the posts will get out there and really do good. Like I made a post recently and it did it did really well. But some of them, it's like they just turn they just turn off the wall, like they literally like turn it off the faucet. Mm -hmm. They yeah. just don't let it happen. I mean, we've got what eight hundred sixty two thousand eight hundred and sixty two thousand people that want to follow me. A post might get to thirty thousand people. Isn't yeah, that crazy? Mm -hmm. It is, it's and nuts. it's it's gotten so much worse. Like over the last two, month and a half, two months, I, I've noticed just the reach has just been crippled. Yeah, yep. but the, see, the thing is, if you're morse for your lives or whatever, then that goes out to everybody. Yeah. yeah. And then, so, oh, they're going to yeah. make sure they're going to make sure all the antis get their crap out there. But they're oh, going to yeah. throttle people like me because they they know, especially when, you know, when I'm really trying to hold the NRA's feet to the fire on some of the stuff they've been doing. You know, I, I'm I'm hated by people in the pro gun community and the anti gun community. Oh, so yeah. I, I'm a double whammy. I'm a poison pill to them. Yep. Good. Sure. Keep up the good work. So, yep. uh, kind of still touching about like touching on social media. Do you guys ever think that social media kind of interferes with your hobby for like shooting guns and stuff like that? Like, do you ever feel Absolutely. like you can't Absolutely. just go out and shoot? Like, you have to be like, okay, well, we better film this. We're shooting or take pictures for Instagram. Well, the the thing is nowadays, yeah. you know, with I've seen it on Instagram a lot. I mean, I, I frequent Instagram quite a bit, and um. You know, you see channels just getting or pages basically having posts pulled down because they're engaging in the sale of firearms, but they're really not. It's just someone reported them, you know, for selling guns. And that someone who reported them doesn't have a clue what the legalities of it are. They don't they don't understand that, you know, there's no private sales on a platform like Instagram. There's no private sales on a platform like Facebook. But if you're just if you're saying, OK, hey. Hey, check out this gun. This is really cool. I got it from so-and-so. Oh, well, they're selling a gun. No, technically they're not. Well, I think what she's getting at is when you, okay, so say you, you want to go out and just do a little bit of shooting and have some fun. All right. Do you, do you feel like now you can't even go out and shoot a gun without feeling like you have to take some photo or you have to film something? Oh, well. Mm -hmm. you know what I mean, do you, do you, it, it, I think she's asking more like recreational shooting. Oh, and the shoot. answer is no. Um, I'll go out in my yard. I'll shoot 22s. Uh, I'll shoot handguns. I'll shoot shotguns. I don't always have to feel like I'm I'm obligated to film something just because we're out shooting. And yeah, like Chad said, when we're out doing data collection, yeah, uh, you know, we might have a B-roll camera while we're shooting groups, or we might have a B-roll camera running just so we're you know collecting chronograph data. But that's just so we can plug a little bit of that footage into the main video when we actually do get to do it. So we do have days where we go out and group guns, we collect chronograph work. Sometimes we go out and shoot for fun. But, yeah, there is that kind of tickle in the back of your mind where you're thinking, you know, yeah, if we're going to go out and shoot, dang it, we need to make a video. Mm -hmm. it, yeah. it, you know, I would say that now as the shooter, I would say at least, not, I'd say 85% of every round I fire is on camera. 
Yeah, yeah. you're right. Like I, I probably misunderstood that, but yeah. like when we've gone, uh, we've got a buddy of ours, you know, Kurt over at Blue Alpha Gear. He does these little range days every now and again down in a buddy's uh, place um, down in the Noonan area. Nice. And, um, you know, we'll get over there and stuff, and we'll be shooting all kinds of crazy guns. It was like, okay, we need to film something for Facebook. <laughs> right. Yeah. Like, just yeah, for the yeah. hell of it. You there, know? There, is, there is that sort of thing in the back of your mind where you're like, hey, I want to film something. And, like, you know, and I, I, I manage the Facebook channel or the Facebook page. So, yeah, I'm always thinking, all right, I need content. So if mm-hmm. Chad's – Chad's filming a section where he's talking and I'm taking a picture of him filming himself. And then I put that picture on Facebook. So yeah, there is a little bit of that in the back <laughs> of your mind. And I'm, I, I do a, lot, a good bit of hunting and I do a good bit of shooting and plinking in the yard, but a lot of rounds that get logged. We're generally filming mm-hmm. to answer your question. Totally. Indeed. I love it. All right. So, I mean, you guys do a lot of other stuff as well. Uh, so yeah. you guys have your man cam program, um, which is actually pretty cool. I want you to tell us a little bit about that, but then after you tell us about man cans, I'd like you to tell us uh, a little bit about maybe a music related channel that you guys are, are kind of doing, working on whatever. Sure. Uh, well, man cans kind of started as a joke. All right. And, and I'm not going to spend a lot of time talking about this cause I don't want to sound like Billy Mays on here and your, your people are probably <laughs> thinking, all right, get it over with. But, but basically man cans kind of started just as a joke and we we're like, Hey, we're going to put together these little boxes that you can give like the gun lover in your life as like a gift or whatever. Mm-hmm. And it turned out to be a really kind of popular idea. And, and it's basically, you know, my wife was getting all these like birch box and loot crate and all these lady cans and all these nerd cans. And I'm thinking, well, why don't we do a guy can? Well, you know, and it seemed like such a cool idea to do a guy box. So we started doing them and that idea really resonated with our fans a lot well, because it, it was something they wanted to do to help support the channel and when they buy a can, they're they're sending funds in that support the channel. They're getting a cool mystery box, and it was kind of a cool idea. Well, remember yeah. too, the the idea kind of was stagnant for about a year. We did a video, I think, like in Christmas of 2013 or 2014 at Moss, where we were talking about like Christmas gift ideas for shooters. Yeah, and, and we, we basically we, laid out the whole yeah, idea. <laughs> we put together like literally an ammo ammo can with a bunch of stuff in it. It was like, hey, it's a man can, you know. And we just kind of thought about it over the course of the next year. And around Christmas that following year, yeah, we're like, we'll sell these. <laughs> it's like, hey, you know, so Brandy, Brandy was very instrumental in putting this together, you know, talking to a bunch of the folks that we work with. You know, we had like shoot steel targets. We had stuff from like Vista and Federal in there. I mean, all kinds of random oh, yeah. stuff. I mean, it was like $100 worth of stuff for, you know, like 30 bucks, whatever the case was. So we had like 100 of them that we were able to put together and they sold out like hotcakes. And we sold them that, in 20 minutes yeah, that were gone. After that, it was like, you know what? Maybe, maybe this is something that people want. Yeah. So it's, it's been, it's been definitely a, um, you know, a learning experience, you know, trying to, yeah. trying to meet customer demands. And, and really put out like good stuff. And it's been a, a big blessing for us because, you know, it's been the, the major way that we support what we do on the channel. I mean, yep. all the, all the camera equipment, all the, the props and everything like that, that we have to buy, you know, to actually put these videos together, all that stuff comes from, you know, the folks who support us on Patreon and folks that support us through programs like man cans. That's I mean, right. Because, you know, you know, contrary to popular belief, you know, I mean, we're not living high on the hog on the goo goo money. Like everybody, <laughs> yeah, like everybody think. thinks we are. It's yeah. like, oh, you, yo, you guys are big YouTubers. Oh, you no. drive we've, Lamborghinis. We've taken a humongous hit in that regard, and, and I'm not going to talk about that because no, it's not. It doesn't matter. It's, it's just, it's just crazy. Like, but, but we are just about 100 percent fan supported. Yeah, you know, and our I fans are the greatest. You know, they they really are the best. So back in February. Uh, we decided, you know, and, and this is something that's been like a long time in the works. Like I would say at least over the last two years, I've been saying, yeah, we need to do a music channel. And a lot of my people close to me that know I play guitar, they're like, dude, you need to do a music channel. You need to do a music channel because I've always wanted to have a place to kind of put some of the guitar stuff out there and just do whatever. So back in February of this year, you know, the channel hasn't been up very long. We just started a new YouTube channel called Guitar Arsenal. And that channel, basically, uh, we demo uh, very much in the same way we do with Iraq Veteran, we demo various gear related to music, whether it's guitars, amplifiers, effects. Uh, we have a little series similar to Gun Gripes called Tone Talk, where we lay out different things that are going on, which we actually need to film more of. Mm, we do. Uh, and we, we have a lot of gripes uh, that are related to the music stuff that are, are very, very much resonate within uh, the music community. Guitar like Exactly. So, uh, you know, we do have uh, that channel and it's been a lot of fun. We post twice a week, you know, uh, every Monday and every Friday, a new video goes live. 
we're at like 7,000 subs. I've really tried not to really spam the crap out of my viewers over this whole thing. Like we've done a couple of soft launches. I've done a couple of soft mentions. We, we haven't really wanted to, to, to blow everybody's feed up over the music channel. We've been trying to let it grow sort of organically uh, with the occasional announcement here and there. You know? Yeah. yeah. Now I understand. That's pretty well, fun. It's, a, yeah. it's definitely a reprieve from the gun stuff. I mean, we actually filmed some guitar solo stuff yesterday. And uh, it's always fun just to get up in the loft and just hang out and play music and, you know, yep. just get away from everything else. It's, it's, it's a challenge just, because it's a different mindset, yep. mm-hmm. you know, that you have to put yourself into. It's it's a completely different creative process. So it's challenging, but it's also rewarding and it's, it's fun to do. And oh, we really enjoy it. I always so think that I, I can imagine I was going to ask that, Chad, but I, I always think that the content creators, there's like a lot of musicians in the ranks here. I mean, I know like Chris Wood from Tactical Walls plays the stand-up bass. You guys oh, play yeah. guitar and, and all that good stuff. And there's several drummers. I mean, we've got John Patton, Chad Enos from Keltec, myself. They're, like we've got we've got the makings for a pretty cool band going on, guys. Mm-hmm. There you go. <laughs> they don't want you in their band. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm thinking they were like, "Yep, that's cool. Move along." <laughs> so I'm well, thinking we'll, we'll, we'll audition you, Sean, and see if you can hang. Uh, yeah, that's so. fair. That's fair. So here's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking. That at the range day this year, we need to have like a jam session or something. You want to put a stage up at the uh, at the range day? I think I think we should. I can, think it's only. Can I right. be the singer? No. <laughs> okay. Do you, do you sing blues? Uh, yeah. I basically make everyone blue when I sing. <laughs> oh, there we go. All right. You must sing some Justin Bieber or something like that. Or... No, she likes Britney to sing. Britney Spears and Pink. Okay. <laughs> oh yeah. No, well, that, we don't do any a, of that. Um, that. That's that's a it's an idea that we can entertain. We'll see what it would take to do that. We can we can play during lunch. Exactly. Show during lunch. It would be fun. Everybody have their ear pro on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, All right. Perfect. So I have to ask, uh, kind of wrapping up, what would you guys say is your best accomplishment, and then I guess worst failure? Best accomplishment and worst failure. That's a tough one. Let's see. In That's business, a deep question. In business or in life? Ooh. I guess I just say, in I general. Think she means probably the channel. Probably business. Yeah. yeah. Well, well, no, yeah, it could we'll be s- really with anything. Sure. Let's get deep, guys. Yeah. That is deep. Dang. Maybe we should have read the show notes. <laughs> oh, come on. I would I would say accomplishment wise, I mean, we've we've kind of we built a brand about around being just like average honest guys and everything like that. And I've created a product basically out of nothing, which I, I feel is a pretty good accomplishment for somebody of, of, of my upbringing and and everything like that. And you know, I, I feel like I've I've made a good accomplishment in, in marrying a, a good lady that uh that that understands what I'm about and, and knows that I'm complicated as crap and she screwed she's the one that screwed up. <laughs> she's related to me. She's related to me, so you know, we're all a little screwed up. That's right. The that's right. I would say that's a good overall accomplishment. And I mean in terms of downfalls, uh I wish I I wish I would have done more with music stuff mm-hmm. earlier in life I, I wish i would have maybe started my music channel earlier and and try to build it as i built iraq veteran but mm-hmm. hindsight's 2020 as they always say and there's a lot of things i wish i would have always you know done different i mean I, you know I, we can always say that we regret things we can always say that oh i would have done this i would have done that everything does happen for a reason and i, I feel that you know we we oftentimes in life it's easy to regret things because it's already happened uh, you know, there's always a part of me that wishes I would have stayed, you know, stayed in with military stuff and, and went further down the rabbit hole in that regard. But then I look back on it and realize, you know, there's a reason I'm here and I'm doing what I'm doing here. And if I would have went down that other path, I wouldn't have been here. So I can't really regret. I can't really regret anything. I'd, I'd say, I mean, on, on like a on the on the aspect of the channel itself, you know, I, I don't say that we really regret anything that we've ever done because we've always learned from everything. You know, and at one point we got a little bit more involved with the industry, um, you know, and, and trying to trying to kind of see what was all about or see what was all about um, as far as uh, what the industry was all about, as far as, you know, like the, the magazines, and everything goes and how these 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 writers put put forth articles and everything like that. And, you know, really, we, we got a bad taste afterwards. And, you know, I mean, it. I, I, especially I meeting them yeah especially meeting a lot of those guys because it's just the same old bull crap it's just mm-hmm. it's just like politics you know it's all bureaucracy and just good old boy politics most and of crap. i hate to say most of them um, are jerks and um a lot of us like like eric said earlier you know they hate our guts but 
it's definitely not something we regret because it, we came out of it learning a lot. It made us who we are. It, it made us who we are. And, you know, the thing is, like Eric said earlier, you know, we're we're just ourselves on camera. We're just normal guys. We're just very well known. Um, and we just get out there and we shoot and we, we tell you guys what we like, what we don't like. And, you know, you can take it kind of for, for what you will. But um, in, in, in more of a personal realm, I have let work get um, a little bit more involved uh, in my personal life. Um, you know, there's there's times where I mean, I'll, I'll be behind the computer sometimes. You know, if I'm editing, I'll be behind the computer for 12 to 14 hours sometimes. Mm hmm. A lot of folks don't really have any clue what it takes on the back end to actually keep the channel running. You know, not only on my side of things, because I do all the filming and editing, but like Brandy's side of things. And Eric does a lot of correspondence and keeps up with all of our, all of our people. And, you know, is planning, planning, you know, yeah. planning new content and then getting together and getting props and getting things built and everything like that. I mean, you know, there, there's a lot that goes into to what we do. And a lot of times people just don't realize the work and the time that's involved with keeping a channel like ours running. Um, but, uh, yeah, I, I'd say one of the things I regret is not devoting more time to my family in the past several years, um, you know, on a personal level. You know, I, I feel like, you know, I've, I've done better lately, but, you know, you have to put work to the side. You know, although this is, it, it is work, but it's fun. Mm -hmm. you know, it, it really is. It's, it's, it has uh, its ups and downs. It does. Yeah. It's just like anything else. But, you know, we, we get to make our own schedule for the most part, but that schedule is quite busy. I mean, I do the jobs of three people. You know, Eric does the jobs of three people. Brandy does the jobs of three people. It's it's not easy. Yeah, and er everybody thinks that we're rolling in the dough and we, and we you know, we, all this stuff. And, yeah, I would love nothing more than to hire him a full-time, like, editor. Or, not I say editor, but a full-time editor. Uh, <laughs> like grip or somebody yeah, yeah, somebody, somebody to help somebody out, to yeah. help him out with editing the content full time mm. but gosh the thing is it's just the funds aren't there you know everybody thinks we're rolling in the dough but it's it's tough i mean we we all here have to wear many hats yeah mm -hmm. uh to, to keep it going and you know we we survive we do okay but uh you know there are there are times where we wish we could clone ourselves for sure for mm -hmm. sure definitely all right well um where can our listeners find you oh all over the internet Okay, all, all Mr. Over. Humble well, you know, Drag. Go to, uh, if, if go you, to YouTube uh, forward slash Iraq Veteran eighty eight eighty eight. Obviously, we're on YouTube. We're also on Facebook, uh, Iraq Veteran eighty eight eighty eight official on Facebook. Also, Mrs. Iraq Veteran eighty eight eighty eight on Instagram. So on Instagram, you've got Mrs. Iraq Veteran eighty eight eighty eight. You've right. got me, Chad underscore IV eighty eight eighty eight. Eric has an official channel now on Instagram. I yeah. saw that. So that's Iraq Veteran. So we, we are on the Nasty official. Gram now. We yeah. are on the Nasty are. Gram. And then you can also find Guitar Sonal over mm -hmm. on YouTube. Just go to YouTube, type in Guitar Sonal, we'll pull our ugly mother. And up. even even more simple than any of that, if you just go on Google and you type Mosin Nagant, the entire first page will be nothing but our content. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I can guarantee it. That's amazing. Who, who Who's running the official uh, IV8888? instagram page well it's supposed to be him but brandy and i are both logged into it so okay i was like one of you guys liked my post the other day keep that shit up all hey, right it wasn't me it must have been brandy because <laughs> <laughs> i don't like you sean <laughs> damn it chad i thought we were close i thought we were tight i do love you I, I need to get more active on instagram it's just it's tough it, it's hard enough for me to keep up with facebook but i'm gonna i'm gonna try to make a legitimate effort to post more stuff to instagram mm -hmm. it can be tough because i'm the kind of guy like i don't like to post stuff to facebook and instagram and it be the same content like i want the content to be separate you know i want people to have a reason to go to either or you know Ugh, what I mean? exclusivity so yeah well, i can't follow my facebook because i don't see the same thing on instagram right. i don't know i, I, like, I like to post different stuff on instagram than i post on facebook he posts more stuff he posts bigly more on <laughs> <laughs> all right then <laughs> all right guys can you hang out with us for a little bit of course hmm? all right cool All right, real quick, we have to give a shout out to Matador Arms, uh, our Canadian friends to the to the what is it north, the the cold, white, frosty north of Canada. Mm -hmm. One of the things I wanted to talk about is some of their uh, Chris Vector products. Yeah. So we recently saw Deadpool. Did you notice any guns? I did. I noticed that, lots of guns. Uh huh. Like like well like what was one of them? Uh, a Chris Vector. Uh huh. Yep. <laughs> uh, it, which is funny because that guy uh, who's the the guy that had the Chris Vector, what's his name? I'm uh, not like really. Who was to... it? Cable or? Yeah, Cable. Yeah. Uh, so I noticed that he had like every accessory. I think it had like a 50 cal barrel and 
uh, all these different like accessories. It was and ridiculous. I, it was crazy. Uh, but anyway, so one of the things that would have been kind of cool though is if they had the folding aluminum vector adapter. Yeah. So I actually know the guy that designed these and licensed them to Matador Arms. He's a good guy, and uh, I actually have one of these in the closet. It just doesn't fit my vector, so I need to. I got. I guess I got to get another vector just so I can use that part. I mean, because if, it only fits the the uh, newer models, correct? I believe so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the older, ones. yeah, the older ones it will not fit. Uh, but anyway, so if you guys want to check those out or any of the other products that Matador makes, you could use the code GUNFUNNY10 and that gets you 10% off. And that's matadorarms.com. And I guess it's time for a prank call. It is. And guys, we made this prank call um, specially for you. <laughs> okay. It's time for prank calls with Malcolm and Gertrude. Honey! Uh, hi there. This is uh, one of them indoor shooting ranges. Yes. Hi, my, my name is Kenny. I was just wondering. So, yeah, a lot of wheel guns in there, right? What do you mean? Like, like wheel guns. Wheel guns. Wheel guns. What is that? Well, uh, do you do you allow the wheel guns in the range? Shoot guns? I don't know what you're saying. W- what kind of guns do you allow in the range? Every gun. E- every single gun? Yes. Just no steel core, steel casing, ammo. Okay, so you do allow the wheel guns, Dan. Uh, yes, whatever that word is you're saying. Wheel. <laughs> What's a wheel? Wheel guns in a range. Yes. So none of them pretend guns. It's the wheel guns. Yes. All right. That sounds good. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> so that guy was a little rude. Like, he had just no fucks given. <laughs> he was kind of a dick, and I loved it. <laughs> Usually they're a lot nicer than that. But it was no, you know, if, if you dish it out, you got to be able to take it too. <laughs> yes. The real guns, y'all, y'all, y'all get them real guns in that range. Um, yeah, yeah, we got the real guns. I'm like, don't make fun of my speech impediment, mean guy. <laughs> See, when when you were doing the show earlier, I thought that we were doing a prank call. I thought that would be a lot of fun. Dude, uh, you guys like so, to make a prank call? Yeah. That would be amazing. Yeah, Actually, can. you know who we wanted to prank call was uh, your friends over at uh, Forge from Freedom, but we looked and there was no number. Why don't you call Moss Pond? Can you do that now? Yeah, sure. let's do it. Yeah, call him. All right, just give us and a are, second. Are you guys going to prank him or are we? Yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. All right, yeah, we got this. All right, okay. so while she gets that ready, um, yeah, so we've we've made a couple calls with that character uh, that with the wheel gun thing. Uh, all right, so what's the? Let me uh, let me look it up right here, so we don't say their number over the broadcast. That's fine. Go ahead. <laughs> right. I mean, it is a company. I, they I could pass seven seven zero. I think oh. it's what is it? Seven seven zero. Let look it up. Look it up. Heck, I don't remember the number. What is what is the it's, number? They're probably going to hang up on us. Everything's on speed dial nowadays. So I know. I'll, I'll handle the first one, and we'll keep mm-hmm. calling them back. They'll love it. All right, seven seven zero nine six eight. Four nine four nine. Four nine four nine. Yeah. Four nine four nine. Get your dyslexia. All right. Seven seven zero nine six eight four nine four nine. All right. This is uh. We've never done this before, so we'll see how this goes. Uh, right, we play. actually Here. did make a prank call on air when we first started, and we realized really quickly that was a really bad idea because <laughs> no one answered the phone. <laughs> uh, no, somebody well, answered can, the phone. We can try. Oh, someone will answer. All right. Cool. So she's gonna call, and uh, we'll be quiet while you guys take it away, and then we'll hang up at some point. Eric, Eric can go first, and then we'll call again. <laughs> okay. I'll perfect. All right. Why not? Yeah. Here we go. Yeah. Moss Pond, gun department. Hey, how you doing in there? I'm super. Hey. How are you? You got a gun with one of them pistol grips on it? I do. How many you got up in there? Uh, guns with pistol grips? Or yeah, just guns in general. The pistol, <laughs> pistol grill. Thing up in the front. Uh, yeah, I've got three or four, but I can get. I got a whole stack of pistol grips on the wall. You put as many on there as you want. I want one in the front and the back. Uh huh. We can do that. How much is they? The pistol grip or the gun? The grip. 
The grip start at twelve ninety nine and go up from there. Oh, I'm gonna come up there and get one. All right, come see me. What's your name? What's your name, Cracker? Fred. F R E D. <laughs> All right, I'll be up there. You got it. All right, I'll see F-R-E-D. you later. F R E D. I'll be here waiting. All right, then. <laughs> <laughs> Do you see how hard it is to prank call? <laughs> uh, just, I'm just surprised that they didn't recognize your voice. <laughs> no, that was uh, pretty probably, good. You might have known it's me. All right, Chad, come back in. <laughs> <laughs> was Chad laughing too hard? Oh, yeah, yeah, he was. <laughs> you're gonna, you're gonna have to you're gonna have to uh, edit part of that out. <laughs> nah, it's it's cool. The thing is, like, they're they're used to people heckling them. They they probably they have fans that call, and they probably get prank called by the fans too. All right, <laughs> all right, it's Chad's turn I now. Believe. Yeah, it's my turn. All right, all right, I love it. Yeah, call Chad, back. Who are you gonna call? <laughs> oh, they're no, call, they're calling the same people. Oh, call okay. Them back. All right. Well, I don't know. No, call, call, call Moss back. Hey, trust me. Okay, yeah, that's fine. Do, Do that. All right. Oh, here we go. Let's see. The number is 770-968-4949. Yeah. Um, yeah. All right, we're calling. Here we you got to be like Leon Phelps. <laughs> Moss Pawn and Guns. Oh, hello! I was trying to get that Eric from the YouTube channel. Uh, what's that? I was looking for Eric, that big sexy from YouTube on on the computer. Eric. Yeah, he's not here. Oh, uh, where he at? Uh, he's probably out making videos. I saw a video with him right there. He was standing in front of them there guns on that rack. They was awesome. I wanted to see him. Yeah, he's not here. Well, there's that other boy, uh, Kevin. Is Kevin there? That big guy with the glasses. He does all them. He does them old guns. You know, with that smoky powder. You know, it's like it's like he he has to put it in the barrel. And then he shoots it, and it's a big puff of white. I know all about the puffs of white now. But I, is Kevin there? I just want to talk to somebody from YouTube because I told my sister that I would talk to them, and I'd be famous. They hung up on us. <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty good. That was awesome. <laughs> That's bad. <laughs> <laughs> Did you hear him? He's like, I'm going to kill uh-huh. myself. <laughs> <laughs> he said that. <laughs> oh, shit. Uh, All right, there you go. Your... <laughs> it's Kevin there. Oh, <laughs> gracious. Does he have a fish sandwich? Oh, I could use a fish sandwich right now. The la- Ooh, it's a lady. Ooh, it's a lady. <laughs> Leon Phelps. Oh, man, that was fantastic. Great job, guys. Yeah, good job. <laughs> You're hired. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you guys can take the prank calls because they really stress us out. <laughs> well, we can prank some people now. <laughs> I love it. All right. So one of the things that I wanted to talk about uh, was some gear. Let's see here. Tacti Talk. Discussing popular guns and gear. Love it? Hate it? Find out now. All right, so I will say that today is the first day that I'm doing audio, and I just learned how to do it about five minutes before the show started. So if you guys are questioning why everything is screwed up, well, it's because I'm learning. So You're doing great. Uh, yeah, thanks. <laughs> All right, so one of the things I wanted to talk about was uh, ATI Outdoors, and uh, they are... Um, I, I don't know how long they've actually been around. I've only heard of them within the last year. ATI has been around for a bit. They've been making some products. They've really expanded their product line uh, over the last few years, I guess. So maybe that's why they're only now just starting to. Um, I've I saw them at Shot Show last year. Um, but anyway, so one of the things I wanted to talk about, uh, I received some of their products, and uh, one of one of the products was a handguard. And I got to say, it's actually a pretty nice handguard. I haven't used it yet. Um, 
but I am putting it, I put it on a, uh, a current build that I have, and I'm also going to use one on a AR pistol that I'm currently uh, building. And uh, the quality and the price are, are pretty great. So for like a 15 inch, you can get one for 130. 12 inches, 120, 119.99. And then they are going to be coming out with the 7 inch here shortly. And I don't know what the MSRP of that is. Yeah. I like these. They are inexpensive. I looked. The fit and finish seem to be uh, really well done. Not a lot of machine or tool marks on it. Uh, and the price, man, like kind of a lot cheaper than a lot of other uh, options that are out there. So 130 bucks for a 15 inch. It is free floated. Uh, the The mechanism to attach it to the barrel nut seems well thought out and seems to work just fine. And yeah, I, I think ATI is doing a lot of good stuff and they're kind of getting more involved in social media and things like that, which is why I think we're seeing a little bit more from them lately. Mm-hmm. And yeah, have you, have you guys shot any uh, ATI products or used any ATI products on your guns? Us? Yeah. Absolutely. Oh yeah. Many, many over the years. I had a tourist judge that had one of their, uh, you know, their grips on it. Yeah, you know, it really, really, really helps with recoil mitigation, everything like that. I've messed around with their M4 stock set that they have for the Benelli M4. Uh, we've done some stuff with their SKS stocks, their Mauser stocks. Um, I've installed several of their Mosin stocks on various actions for customers up at Moss when I was still up there. And uh, for the money, they make an excellent product. Yeah, that's what I was thinking is that it, it's definitely affordable. Um, yeah. How is it? How is it held up for you guys? Wonderful. In fact, I, I built a Mosin Sporter for a customer. We did some custom Duracoat work on it and everything like that, and we installed a scope mount. Uh, we I think we wound up running the rock-solid scope mount, and we ran their bent bolt handle kit, uh, ATI's bent bolt handle kit, which is a bolt-on, mm-hmm. and then we ran their stock, and I floated. Uh, in fact, I think I still have a video on how to float the, the channel on the barrel on those, uh, on the ATI stocks to well, get in there with the rasp and I, open it I up. I think it's involved in the video itself, like the install right. video, because we did a complete install yeah. video. We have an install video on that Mosin mm-hmm. stock and a uh, very good accuracy that we were getting out of it. And it, it really helps with lightweight. And, uh, you know, for the money, they're great little stocks. They work just fine. Very nice. Yeah. And if you guys want to check out their products, you can go to ATIOutdoors.com. All right. Uh, let's get into some iTunes, iTunes reviews. reviews. Yeah. All right, Chad, or Chad. <laughs> All right, Sean, you know the drill. I was like, okay, let me go ahead and go ahead and read these them damn reviews. You just, you just get them reviews together, boy. You just get them together right now. I'm going to do them for Chad. I'm going to do them like Chad. Ooh, thank you so much. <laughs> Sean Cooper 401 says five stars in the name. Well, the name says it all. It's a gun show that is funny. Host seems like a very down to earth lady that's very knowledgeable. I'll thank you. All right. Thanks a lot. Unless they're thank talking you about so you. Much. Oh, goodness gracious. I'm just so flattered. <laughs> a Jimbo is dead says five stars. What a treat. It's really great to see a podcast geared towards celebrating women in the gun world. Eva is great and really tries to put up with Sean's cake addiction. Sean does some okay voices. Who is this Ava? Eva? Uh, I don't know who the Eva is, but she sounds very intelligent to me. I don't know about all that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thanks. All right. Um, wrapping up. Yeah, it's time to it's time to kill this hog. Uh, so let's see. So, guys, um, if you can't get enough of us, you could, you know, find us. Go to gunfunny.com. We're on all of the social media. And uh, if that's not enough, maybe consider becoming a Patreon. Uh, your pledge gets access to our Facebook-only Patreon page, which we're always having fun on there. Uh, sometimes we talk about gun-related stuff. Other times it's, you know, about uh, uh, painting, dieting, <laughs> makeup, <laughs> all kinds of stuff. There's uh, there's no restrictions as to what you can talk about on that page. Definitely. Oh, one of the things that I want to say, uh, thank you to our $25 Patreons, Corbin Bonafide and Adam Balzer from Charger Arms. Yep. Thanks, guys. And then our king of the Patreons is still Cooper Custom Kydex, although I did have somebody recently ask about how to become a king of the Patreons. So 
I don't know. I'm not sure how long Goober Custom Kydex is going to be king of the Patreon, but until then, he would like us to say always affordable options, always quality made. Use coupon code GUNFUNNY2018 for two, for 15% off. Yeah, and here's and, the thing. For people who want to know, to become king of the Patreons, just go to patreon.com slash gunfunny and look and see whoever the, the top dollar Patreon is and just beat their beat their Patreon. And that's pretty much it. Just bid like however much more you want. Mm -hmm. I say beat them by double, but you only really have to beat them by a dollar. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) All right. Uh, And guys, thanks again for joining us, Chad and Eric. And uh, yeah, uh, you already said where we could find you. What do you guys uh, have in mind for the future? You mean like the immediate future? Are you uh-huh. talking about? We're not in oh, silly girl, you know what I'm right? saying. I'm, I'm always in silly voice territory. Nobody will ever want to watch this show again or follow up <laughs> of me. I didn't know Leon Phelps was on the show. No, I'm, I'm kidding. It is fun though. It is. We're we're a lot more goofy in person than people realize. So. Well, oh, yeah. I I, th- I don't think people realize that at all. Like I've got a video. Um, I, mean, I don't even remember where we were, Florida or something, where Eric is like walking me through a lunch buffet. And telling me about every dish. <laughs> <laughs> was it barbecue? Because he knows everything about barbecue. Dude, it was barbecue. Yes, it was barbecue. Oh, yeah. And, and I even recorded it in a slow-mo, so we can even slow down like when the when the brisket's dropping on the bun. It's beautiful. Oh, it's beautiful. Oh, I bet it's glorious. It is. Yeah. Mm, brisket. <laughs> mm. I don't know. We, we're we just kind of mm. moving on with, with life. I mean, we've always got new projects kind of in, in, in the works, and we have a multitude of like military surplus firearms that are just in the queue, you know, either guns that we just haven't taken out for videos. We have ammo for, or guns that we have to load ammo for. And that's kind of Eric specialty Cause he's the big like caster as far as everything goes and making, making guns that are obsolete shoot again. That's his speciality. I think we're going to bring back, shoot your stuff. Uh, you think so? Oh, yeah. nice. I think we should. Are we going to blow stuff up again, or are we just going to shoot it? Uh, probably just shoot it, but we'll shoot it with <sighs> lots of crazy things. <sighs> I can shoot with machine guns now. <sighs> we can. We can. So, yeah, we used to have a, a segment called We'll Shoot Your Stuff, and our fans could send in random crap <laughs> for us to shoot. <laughs> Let's see. Oh, microwaves. I mean, you name it. This one guy sent <laughs> out, like, like, this one guy sent out <laughs> like 400 coffee cups. <laughs> So we made like a stack of coffee cups and shot them down with a machine gun. Worst. No, no, no. We didn't shoot them down with a machine gun. Oh, no, we did shoot them. We shot them with the P90, yeah. I think. And then Eric blew up the rest of the stack with the M1A of mine with some <laughs> with a binary charge. And that was the worst idea ever. We got peppered uh, with ceramic. <laughs> I can imagine. Right, so I, I think we're going to bring that, that back a little bit. And, uh, you know, if y'all ever want us on the show again, uh, you know, feel free to let us know. We'll, we'll be happy to come on the show anytime you'll have us. And, uh, maybe next time, if y'all are ever down in Georgia our way, we can have y'all sit in on a gun gripe or something. That'd be fun. All right. Absolutely. I would love that. Definitely. And, and Absolutely. I've got an idea for uh, shoot shoot your stuff. If I send you Aaron from We Like Shooting, would you guys take care of that for me? <laughs> I'm pretty Ooh. sure that's illegal. Yeah, but, but. you guys live in, in the backwoods of, of Georgia. And I think I think that it, it to be Georgia? <laughs> I think it would be willy, willy good if you were to take care of this problem for me. <laughs> Them, what about them wheel guns? <laughs> yes. Shooting with them wheel guns, right? Yes, the wheel gun. <laughs> the wheel gun. All right. I'm going to send a picture of my ex. All right. Love it, guys. Yeah, oh, yeah that's not a problem. <laughs> All right. We're out of here. <laughs> All right, y'all. See you guys. Want to send feedback? Suggest a place to prank call? Tell us about a company or anything else. Go to gunfunny.com forward slash contact.